I had a request to do a video on oversampling. And so this is that video, and I'll show you how to do it, uh, as well as how to create a training variable. So this is a report that is part of a state file that I'll share with you, but I wanted to just take you step-by-step step by, uh, through how you would do this. So the data we'll use is the DVD data set. It has 20,000 respondents, 20,000 rows, and uh, the uh, outcome variable or response variable is is buy. Did the did the respondent buy or not buy the DVD? So oversampling is useful when there's a there's a, a big difference between the proportion of people that bought and didn't buy. So let's see if that's uh, the case in this particular data set. So if we click on the visualize tab and, and make a histogram of the buy variable, we'll see that you know what it's really not all that important to do oversampling here. I mean, it'd be nice if it was 50-50, um, but that's not the case in this data set, but it's also not, you know, 1% or 2% uh, of people that bought. If it's, you know, that low, like 1% or 2%, then clearly oversampling is, is probably going to help you out. Uh, here, it's really not all that necessary, but, uh, but I'll use the data set any th anyway for illustration purposes. So let's start in the Transform tab, and uh, I'll show you how, how you would uh, usually create a training variable. So if you click on Transformation Type and scroll down, You'll see here a function called training variable. So let's select that. And uh, basically, I've already created the training variable. So this will sample randomly in the data. In this case, 70% of respondents will be in my training sample, and the remainder will be in the validation sample. Or the training variable will have 70% uh, ones and 30% zeros. And you can see that that actually en ends up being the case because the mean of that variable is 0.7. Now, since we're doing oversampling, we don't need just a training variable. We actually need to split the data into three sets, training, validation, and representative. So I'm actually going to use the same functionality first to create a representative sample. We have 20,000 data points, so I'm going to choose uh, 10,000 as, um, as the size of my representative sample. And so you'll notice that before it said 0.7, and if it sees a number below one, it'll make it, it, it'll assume that that's a proportion, but you can also specify the actual number of cases. So in this case, 10,000 rows are going to be assigned to a variable called representative. Okay. And so that is 50-50, so 50% 50 representative sample. The remaining 10,000, we're going to, to uh, tweak that, that remaining, right, the part that's not part of the representative sample into a training and validation that is balanced, right? So that's going to be the trick. Now I could store this in the DVD data set, but what I'd really like to do is just keep that original data set clean, right? I don't want to ch make changes to that uh, so that I can recreate the report starting from scratch. So I'm actually just going to call that representative as well. Uh, so it's going to be my data set um, that has a representative variable in it. Okay, now I'm also going to add something here, which is just a bit for convenience. I'm going to create a data uh, a variable called training. You remember in the representative sample, uh, training was always set to a missing uh, to a missing value, right? So I'm just going to add that to the data set, and that's going to be uh, convenient later on. All right. So now here's my representative data uh, data set. It has a variable that says, "Is this observation going to be part of that representative data set or not?" and a training variable that's just set to, to missing value. Right? So it's not very useful at, the, at this point, but we'll update that in a sec. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to split this data set into representative and, and kind of an estimation part, and in the estimation part we'll have training and validation, and then we'll combine the whole thing at the end. All right, so uh, a function to help you do that is uh, holdout. So basically what holdout does is you specify a filter, so in this case, I'm going to say representative is equal to zero. And that's going to create, uh, uh, once I hit store, it's going to create a data set for me that has all the observations where representative is equal to zero, and you'll see that that is 10,000. All right, so that's going to be my, my, my estimation sample that will have training and validation in it. And I'm going to call that estimation for now. And again, that's we're going to subset that in a minute. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and save that. Now, I also actually want to, because now I'm, I'm back, if I, I select here representative, I don't want that to have all the observations in it. I want that to have just the observations where representative is equal, is equal to 1. So let me choose holdout again. It's basically just a good way to kind of split data sets in, into bits. 
So I can do two, two things to, to find the stuff where it says representative is equal to one. I can either change the filter or I can say reverse the filter. Does the same thing. So this will then generate a data set where representative is equal to one for all observations. Right? Uh, so there's the opposite of this filter. And I'm going to just overwrite the representative data set that I created earlier. Okay, so now I'm going to have three data sets, the original DVD, DVD file, which is untouched, representative with 10,000 observations, and an estimation sample that's going to have my training and validation data sets in it. All right, so let's store this. And now I'm ready to, to move on. So what am I going to do with this estimation data set? Okay, well, I'm going to need a training, a training, an actual training variable that has values in it. So let's make that using, of course, that training variable. And I'm just going to do what we usually do is something like 70% uh, training. There we go. So 70% and all, I know it says all ones here, but that just happens to be a sequence of, of ones because the, the mean of that training variable is 0.7 exactly the way I want. All right. So now I'm a good chunk of the way there. I've got estimation representative DVD. Uh, and I can see if there's a problem here with, uh, with balance, right, in terms of buyers and non-buyers. So the way I would take a look at that would be to say, let's look at buy and training. So I'm actually going to change the order here uh, and make a plot. And you'll see, you'll see why in a sec. So this is a visualization of what the data looks like. I've got my validation data set and my training data set, right, or, or part of the sample. And what I'd like is for these bars in this chunk to be the same height and in this chunk to be the same height, right? Because then there would be the same number of buyers and non-buyers. Same thing here, same number of buyers and non-buyers. It's not the case now, so somehow I would like to just cut this off, right, and cut this off right here. They don't have to all four be the same height, because I actually have 70% of my sample assigned to training and 30% to validation. So what I need to know is how high is this bar and how high is this bar, right? So that I can try to start cutting this off. So how many in the validation sample are buyers? 810. But I have 2,190. So somehow I need to drop a bunch of these. I have 1,852 buyers in the training sample, training part. And so instead of 5,148, I want to reduce that number to 1852. So how do I do that? Okay, so basically what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to assign numbers to each observation in each of these four chunks. Um, and I'm also going to let the, the, the algorithms or the computer know that 810 eight, is the max or the limit for validation and 1852 is the limit for uh, training. Okay. And then if I assign numbers to all the observations, any number that's part of this chunk that is over 1852, let's remove that. And any number that's larger than 810, let's remove that from this chunk. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, we can do that in transform. And so I'm gonna create some variables and you're probably gonna have to revisit this part of the um, the video a little bit because this is a little bit more complicated. So we're going to create a first variable where I'm going to add to the data set information about the number of buyers in training and validation. So how would I do that? I can just do the sum of buy is equal to yes. Okay. Now if I just do it this way, there's only one value in this variable. It's and it has a value of 2,662, which is, of course, the sum of these two, right? So that's across the entire data set. But what I want is I want 810 and 1852. So this variable should have two values. And so what I'm going to do is select training. And now, if you recall, just like what we did with RFM, it's basically going to break that variable up into two uh, data into two chunks and say, okay, calculate the sum of buyers yes, if training is equal to zero, and also calculate the sum of buyers equal to yes, if training is equal to one. Now I only see the value for the training uh, sample here, but 
you'll notice if I look at the, the, the summaries, there's two values in this variable, 810 and 1852. Right, so it did what I wanted. So that's step, step one. I'm going to add that to the data set. Now what I'm going to need to do is create a couple more variables where I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to assign a value to each of the uh, observations in training and validation, but I'm going to chunk up the data. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say do it by the by variable and by training. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Remove, let's call it remove two. Uh, one, two. Okay, so this is a special function in R um, that is basically going to make a sequence from one to n, where n is the size of the chunk that we're in. Right, so if this were uh, the entire data that we were looking at, it would be 10,000. But remember, we have four blocks. We have training, buyer, non-buyer, uh, sorry, uh, and validation, buyer, non-buyer, right? So four chunks. Each of those are of different sizes. And what are the sizes? They're specified right here, okay? So, uh, and then what I would do is, if that is larger than remove one, then I'm going to set that variable remove two equal to true. So let's see if that actually works. Okay. So there's a bunch of trues and falses. Why do I say if larger than remove one is equal to true? Because those are observations that are larger than, larger than what? Either A10 or A52. Right? And I want this chunk to be smaller. I want this to be no larger than 1852 in terms of number of people, and this chunk no larger than 810. All right. So that's the trick. Right? Uh, there's really not a whole lot to it, but um, you have to know some of the commands, obviously. Now, here's the weird, the, pot the potential problem with this. I've just assigned numbers, assuming that there's no ordering of any relevance in the data. Right? That it's as if I'm just randomly sampling, and that may not actually be the case. Right? It may just be that, you know, for some reason, my, my better customers are earlier in the data set and uh, the, the worst customers are later in the data set. So actually, I'm going to use this, this function uh, in R called sample. Um, and that's going to sample from this sequence. Uh, and I'm going to sample of the same size as the sequence. So it's basically just going to jumble. So rather than what it said, you know, um, one, two, three, four, five, it's going to jumble those numbers up. And then whichever numbers, because all the numbers are still in there, any number that it finds within the part of the data that is validation larger than 810, we're going to end up removing those. And any number that's part of the training part, right, where training is equal to 1, that is larger than 1852, we're also going to remove those, right? Because those are going to be set to true, and then I'll be able to, to figure out which ones those are and remove them. All right. So the only thing I've done here with sample, again, is just I've just jumbled the order of the numbers to make sure that I'm just really randomly sampling which observations from the um, uh, non-buyers in training and validation are going to be removed. Okay, now I can actually just in the same line create another variable because uh, the way to remove data points is to set a value to a missing, a missing number and then just remove all, all rows that have missing numbers in them. So let me just call this remove three. Again, I could, well, all right, and I'm going to say where if remove two is equal to true, missing, else one or something. doesn't really matter, right? So you've noticed now that there's a bunch of missing values here, right, in this remove three variable, and we're going to use that to figure out which observations to drop. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, we're going to drop observations that are non-buyers in training. We're going to drop observations that are non-buyers in validation. And how many? Exact, uh, enough so that we exactly balance out the number of buyers and non-buyers in each subset. Okay, so I'm going to store and add these variables to the data set. And now almost the last step is I'm going to remove missing values. Now, if I want to remove missing values, I just have to tell it on which variable or variables do I want to look for removing, removing missing values. So if I select remove three, right, that has missing values in it, it'll show me that what's going to be left is 5,342 observations. 
out of what? Out of 10,000. Right, so we had 10,000 to start. There were too many non-buyers in there. So I need to remove a chunk of those. How many do I need to remove? I need to remove 5,324. That's what it's telling me. Right? We can figure out if we're right, right? We'll do a plot in a minute and see if they're nicely, nicely balanced. And if they are, then we did it right. Okay, so let's store that. You'll notice um, that we now have left 5,324. So it's actually not removing um, 5,324. We're, we're keeping 5,324. All right, so let's go take a look at our pivot. And there we go. It worked. So now we have 810 buyers and non-buyers in the validation sample and 1852 buyers and non-buyers in the training sample. Great. Now, we could leave it at this, do our estimation and validation on this data set, um, right? The estimation, we call it estimation, or we can actually get, combine this with a representative data set and use that in exactly the same way we did in class. And how would we do that? We'd use the function called combine. So we've got estimation and representative sample. And basically all I have to do is just uh, uh, glue those on top of each other. And so the function to use for that is called bind rows. And I'm going to call that new data set DVD. Let's call it DVD new. And all that's going to do is just take this and stick it on top of this one. All right. Let's see if that works. Looks like it. So now we have, we don't have 20,000 observations anymore. Okay. Why? Because we removed a bunch of, um, a bunch of observations. Too, there, there were too many non-buyers in the training and validation data sets, and, and I need to remove the right number. Okay, so I don't need these variables, so I'm going to remove those. Uh, but we now have a, a new clean data set called DVD new, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a second. All right, so let's go back to transform. Let's get rid of these because we don't need them anymore. Oh, I'm actually going to do this in DVD new. I don't need these variables. Remove one, two, three. This is just some cleanup. Uh, we order remove variables. Okay. All right. Now the final check we'll do is to see if this whole thing worked. So this is now my DVD new data set, which is a transformation of the original. And in that data set, you'll see that there are the same number of buyers, non buyers in the validation data set the same number of buyers and non-buyers in the training data set, but not the same number of buyers and non-buyers in the representative sample. Remember that in the data that we used, we set the value of the uh, training variable to missing for the representative sample set. So this is basically the, the representative uh, data set. Right? And there's 10,000 people in there, as we said at the beginning. So if you followed along, you're able to reproduce this, uh, then you are able to create both training variables, which are easy, uh, and um, uh, oversampled data. Now, I also did some estimation uh, as part of the state file, so you can also see kind of a reminder of how you would go about creating a, um, a weight variable, right, for, for estimation later on. Uh, but I hope that gives you an idea of how you would set up oversampling uh, in Radiant. Okay? Uh, let me know if you have any comments.